Hey guys, it's Bear with the Gimme Camper. I want to apologize about the lighting out here. It's morning time. I couldn't get this done yesterday. It was a little bit overcast, so it wasn't much better. And Hurricane Ida's moving in, so it's getting ready to be rainy, cloudy, nasty for a few days here in Tennessee. So, I'm just telling you, this is the best it's going to get, or we're going to have a, a video where the camper's the backdrop, because it's going to be done in a couple of weeks. So, we're just going to go ahead and get her done. Now, I will tell you that this campground that we're at, this is Fairview Campground. Some places, including the sign out front, it says Fairview Campground on Devil Step. It is a campground that you reserve through Thames Ford State Park. It is part of Thames Ford State Park, but that's eight or nine miles away. For those of you that don't remember, we did do a video on the main campground at Thames Ford about six months ago or so. And when we did that campground, we drove over here and we decided this looked like a really nice place to stay and we were gonna have to come back in the summertime. Sadly, the summertime wasn't too nice to us because it's pretty daggum hot over here this weekend. We did have the lake here you can enjoy, um, but it, it was pretty daggum hot, I'll tell you that. So we came over here in the winter, we wanted the water to come up and we wanted the heat to come up and, and it warmed up a little bit too much. According to the website, there are 82 campsites here at Fairview, and most of them are really nice campsites. I only have a few that we'll avoid, and we'll get to that in a few minutes, but most of them are really nice campsites, and I think there are about 30 that it said have sewer hookups, which I didn't even realize before I made my reservation. Of course, we only come for the weekend, so I could care less if I have sewer. I'd rather have a front yard on the lake. I'm not sure where the sewer hookup sites are here, but... You know, it, like I say, it doesn't matter to me if we have sewer or not if we're just here for three or four days. Now, all state parks do have campsites year-round, the ones that I've run into anyway, but it's usually on a limited capacity. So I did notice on their website that they said that they have a few here that they do kind of raffle off for like the whole winter season. And then they have quite a few of them that are open all year long that you can make nightly reservations at. The cell phone service here, we have one to two bars of Verizon. It's been a decent signal. It's not been the greatest in the world. And then they do have Wi-Fi here and the Wi-Fi has been okay. It's pretty slow too. Um, occasionally I'll flip back and forth from one to the other uh, because you know one of them's just kind of sputtering out for me a little bit. But don't expect any great speeds here, okay? All right, so what attractions does Fairview Campground have? Well, the number one's gonna be the water. Um, you know, you're not gonna have a lot of stuff like you have at other campgrounds, like the main campground where you have all of the playgrounds and all that stuff. You're gonna have the water here. Now with the water, there's not a predefined like swim area, like a beach area here, um, but a lot of these sites do have water access that just go right down on the water. I thought by looking at the map that the site where we're at right now, where we stayed was gonna be on the water. Um, when we came through in the winter time, the water was down, so it was hard to judge. Now looking at the map, it looked like it just came right up to the site. When in actuality, you know, it's kind of a little marshy area here before you get to the water. So we either had to go around one way or the other to get to the water. And if you go this way, there's a site right here kind of felt like they were you were in their area so we went around the other way i will tell you that if you have a boat that you like to bring camping apparently this is the place to be because i have saw more boats here this weekend than i've ever saw at a campground anywhere all my life um there's just a couple over here left now because it's monday morning and most everybody's pulled out the main thing that i'd caution you and your children about about swimming in this area is the boat traffic now i didn't see anybody going too crazy because this water's not real deep right here and they're they're coming in nice and slow and everything like that but you got to be careful of these boats because there are a lot of boats in this area there are four trails here in the fairview campground area they range from like a quarter of a mile to 3.8 miles we didn't do any because it's just too daggum hot this weekend i'm trying to get back into hiking and stuff i gotta work on work on my figure when we get back home from out west. We're going to be headed out west to Yellowstone and the Tetons and the Badlands here in a couple of weeks. And so 
I know now's not the right time, but I really gotta fix this issue that I got going on, if you know what I mean. If you're looking for supplies, you'll be glad to know that there's a Dollar General just right at the end of the main road that comes in here on the campground, which will have a lot of the stuff you need, including some lemon and groceries. If you're looking for a little bit more, the town of Winchester is only about four miles away. It's got a good southern charm with a good rural feel to it. And it's a really nice area. They got some grocery stores there and they got, you know, some restaurants and that kind of stuff. And so, you know, you're not really that far away from anywhere. If you're looking for something a little more uh, edgy to do, something a little more up and coming, you know, you can travel on down to uh, Lynchburg. That's about 30 minutes away. And that's, I guess it's not up and coming because it's been there a good long while, but that's where the Jack Daniels Distillery is. And you can do tours there. We've still not made it over there, even though, uh, the people that we camp with have been there the last two times we've come over here in this area. So we're falling behind. We got to get over there and check that out. Maybe we'll look for somewhere to camp a little bit even closer to the area. But we'll keep that in mind for the future. As far as the other campground amenities, like I say, there's not a playground or anything like that over here. But there is a volleyball court behind the bathrooms. And the bathrooms are really nice. They're private. They're climate controlled. They're clean. You can't really ask for much more than a bathroom. I mean, it's not like the nicest bathroom in the world, but it's all the basic things that you look for in a bathroom when you go camping. All right, so let's get into site recommendations here. So I'm going to start by saying that there's only one little side loop, which I'll tell you about in a minute, that I would avoid except for one side in that whole loop. Just because those are the areas where the, camp, the campsites are more squeezed together. They're more unlevel. And it's just not an area that I'd want to be in. But besides that, every other side in here is okay. The other ones that are on my, you might want to avoid list are mainly because, you know, they're in that issue where you have a dug out in a hill and the site's surrounded by railroad ties. But, you know, let's face it, the sites are level. They're decently long, most of them. And about any site you get in here, especially like the sites inside the circle that aren't going to be on the water, they're not going to be on my list, but they're nice campsites if you just want somewhere to hang out. So you're not bringing your boat and you don't care about going swimming and you just want somewhere and everywhere else is taken up. It's still a good site. All right. So my first recommended site, the one at the top of the list is going to be 23. 23 is a very large site with a lot of waterfront. You have a huge amount of space because the septic tank and the electrical hookup station there is right in front of your camper so this takes up about two to three site spaces worth of of space there in that area so you have a very large yard you have a lot of waterfront there and it's a great site my next recommended site site 27 site 27 is a very spacious site at the end of the loop and it's on a little bit of a peninsula there there is a pavilion right beside there but let's face it most of the time nobody's going to be at that there's nothing else in that whole area except for some nice shade trees and there is a lot of water access there behind your camper that goes all the way around the end of the peninsula so if you're just looking for some yard space as long as they don't have that, that pavilion rented out for a specific time you are going to have like a huge yard the next site that i recommend site 22 Site 22 is a nice site with water access. It's a little close to 23, but it does have your main camping area kind of behind where the camper is going to be in front of you. So you still have your own personal space there, but the water is kind of at a 45 degree angle from the rear of your camper. So it's still kind of in front of your camper and it's a great site. It's this site that's right here, right there, right there first one then i'd say site 21 site 21 is where we are here that's where i stayed like i say i thought the water was up a little bit closer there is you know not as much shade here as in some of the other options but there's still a couple of shade trees around this whole area does have some huge pine trees around for shade and you know this is a pretty nice site you got a lot of space you have a beautiful view here of the lake if it wasn't so daggum hot where I could sit out here and enjoy it a little bit more during the day, it would have been a great experience. It's still a good experience, but it would have been 
awesome. The only drawback for me is this whole marshy area right here, but you're gonna have some of that if you're at a lake somewhere or another, it's gotta be somewhere. And so really, I mean, I, I understand. Next on the recommended list are sites 24 through 26. 24 through 26 don't have as much space. There are a lot of trees there for shading as well as there's a lot of water access because it's the ones that are right down the uh, side of the peninsula here. And, you know, they, they're just kind of closer together than a lot of the other campsites here. But you do have the water right there. And you do have kind of that thing where the campsites are at 45 degrees. And so basically at the back of your campsite, you're gonna be kind of behind mostly of the camper that's in front of you. And it's really not that bad of an issue. My next recommended site, site 41. It is the one site that I would recommend in an otherwise unrecommendable loop because a lot of those sites are closer together. We'll get into that in a minute. But this site is on the end of a peninsula. It is kind of raised up out of the water a little bit. It's got a bank there, um, but you know, there is some area there where you can walk down and get to the water. Apparently some of my friends went by on their kayaks. They said it was a great site there and they wish they would have picked it. So I'm going to throw it on the list for you. Next recommended site, site 47. 47 is a large a level area with plenty of water access. Then along with that, we're going to say site 28. Site 28 has a lot of shade trees. The water's behind the camper, but it does start being elevated at this point. So it's not as close to the water as some of the other areas because it does start banking up right there. So it's 48 to 53 were all nice areas. They're easy to get to. They are a little close to their neighbors, but it has good water access. And generally speaking, your uh, main camping area is gonna be behind the rear of the camper in front of you. And that goes back to having these sites at like 45 degree angles. The last sites that I'm going to put on my recommended list were sites 12 through 14. These sites are a little bit up on an embankment, but they do like, you know, have some nice gradual walk down to the lake. It's actually uh, the sites that are behind the boat here and they're kind of up on the hill there. But they are like, you know, 100, 150 feet away from the water bank. And so like me being right here, I feel like I can go over here and kind of share that space because I don't feel like it's all right up in their space like it is right here where you're kind of right in their personal space if you go over here, if you know what I mean. All right, so I'm now on the sites that I would avoid personally. So the ones that I would avoid would be 30 to 37. They do have water behind them, but there's a large bank there and they're all kind of dug in uh, in the bank as far as the campsites and then the other side you can't really get to the water because it is like higher off the ground with the bank there and so i would avoid those sites if possible i would also avoid the loop between 36 and 45 except for that site 41 that we talked about earlier because a lot of these are going to be really unlevel like the site's level but it's built up on rocks and stuff and it's unlevel they're all really close together and I would just avoid that whole area if you have any choice in the matter. These are the worst sites, except for the one that I talked about. These are the worst sites that are in this whole campground. So guys, that's all I got for you here. It's been a good trip. I've liked it. It's just been hot. It's almost so hot that it's unenjoyable. I think next year I'm gonna to try to do more mountain trips in the summertime, um, just to try to see if I can get it a little bit cooler, get a little bit higher up in elevation where the humidity is not so bad. But, you know, this is a nice place. I would go more early summer, late summer, starting to go into the fall. It's gonna be a nice, nice trip out here. You do have to reserve early though, cause it's hard to get reservations out here, but good luck to you. I'll throw the uh, link in for the, the reservations and stuff in the description. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you.